Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Mine this one, Titanium, Real Macroeconomics and Investing, patreon.com slash real macro. All right, so let's talk about inflation as a constraint. Inflation is the constraint. Hmm. Okay. So MMT says that we can print as much as we want and inflation is the constraint. MMT, everybody's reaching for the gold, golden calf. We're rich. The ladies that changed economics forever. MMT is going to make us rich. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what uh, Stephanie Kelton has to say. Can get that aggregate demand up. Can you keep a control of inflation? That's the key question. This is the key question. So what I would emphasize is that, that a country like the U.S. is not revenue constrained. Okay? You have a monopoly over the currency. Right. So you're the only one who can issue it. You're never going to run out. You're never going to be forced into default. You can't go bankrupt. Take that question off the table. Okay. Uh, you take... Okay, a uh, little fun fact. 176 nations have blown up their currency since 1960. And two more uh, since then, Nigeria and Lebanon. They're blowing up their currency as we speak. Um, let's take a look here. You can print whatever you want. Yeah, sure. You you don't have to go bankrupt. <laughs> but one dollar, one US dollar is equivalent to 2.85 million boulevards. Okay, one dollar equals 2.85 million boulevards in Venezuela. You want to go tell them that, oh, you know, you should just take this off the table. Uh, it can be done. You can't go bankrupt. No, don't worry about it. So let's just take that right off the table. Hmm? You think they're going to start laughing at you, or what, if you told them that? All right, let's listen to what else she has to say. Then the question becomes what you just raised. What are the limits? And the limit, the binding constraint, is inflation. If you try to do it all, if you say we're going to have $3 trillion in infrastructure investment this year, we're going to educate the whole population free of charge, we're going to do this, we're going to yeah. do that, we're going to have health, and we're going to do it all tomorrow or next year, yeah. or in the next three <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, we're trying to do infrastructure. We're trying to give uh, education for free. We are doing everything for free. <laughs> uh, I wonder if she watched this video lately, because she would be eating her words. Uh, with, a very, with a shovel, she would be eating those words, right? eating the <laughs> let me hear that one more time hold on let me go back we're going to have three trillion in infrastructure investment this year we're going to educate the whole population free of charge we're going to do this we're <laughs> i'm sorry how can you not laugh at that huh how can you not laugh at that and she forgot to say helicopter money for everybody so uh is she uh out saying hey guys stop Stop. You can't have everything for free. Uh, is she? I, I asked her, actually, on Twitter. I said, okay, we have inflation. Now what? You know what she said? Nothing. Zip. <laughs> Made pretend she didn't see it. Okay. I asked Mosler. I said, all right, now we have inflation. The constraint. The binding constraint. Now what? Oh, no, we don't have inflation. Oh, really? No, no, it's uh, supply chains. Oh. So uh, steel is having a drought, huh? There's a drought and it's affecting steel prices, right? You see, they're gonna deflect. They're gonna, they're gonna make pretend it's not here. No, you crazy? Let's look at lumber. Five hundred and seventy-seven point nine percent up in one year. Uh, must be a drought or something. Uh, supply chains. Uh, let's take a look at uh, steel. Oh, 275% up in a year. Uh, no, there's no inflation. Uh, it's transitory. Yeah. Transitory hyperinflation. <laughs> right. How are we going to pay for it? Well, I think we know how we're going to pay for it down. Who's paying for it, right? You and me. 
Uh, you and me is how we're going to pay for it. See, if you know how to read charts, you would know that we've been on a 13-year downtrend. And um, this should have been a resistance area. And it may still be, but for now it's not. This should have been a resistance area, which would have pushed down commodity prices. Instead, you're getting a breakout. That is substantial. Because what usually happens when you break this 13-year channel, you go up. You go up. So who's going to pay for, for it then? You and me. How? Through inflation. That's how we're paying for it. All these free things, free that, free over there. Oh, can I have that free too over here? Yeah, give me that free thing too. You know, there's no free lunch. You're paying for it. And you will pay for it through inflation. So what did I tell you in the previous video? What did I tell you? Inflation is going to kill MMT. Inflation is going to kill MMT. Because the, the nonsense that they preach and peddling to all the people, the unsuspecting people who think that, uh, you know, they found uh, the golden calf and we're all going to be rich, they're going to pay for it. And they're really not going to like it. Okay? And they're going to pay for it because of MMT ideology. The same ideology they were supporting and cheering on. The stupid notion that the government is just simply going to print money, give it to the poor, and then we're just going to have all this demand, and the economy is going to grow and flourish, and everybody's going to be rich. This fantasy is not working out the way they said. Not in the least. Because you have high unemployment and inflation simultaneously no no it's just supply chains oh yes i stupid me supply chains yes transitory let's see what uh, kimberly clark has to say oh kimberly clark says oh look commodity costs lead to price hikes transitory yes yes because when when commodity prices go down you know what Kimberly Clark is going to do? It's going to come back and be like, okay, now prices are down. We're going to lower prices. Right? No. They're not going to say that. And that's the problem. The problem is once the damage is done, it's not it's irreversible. You will pay more for it. You are the one who's going to pay for it. When Ke uh, Stephanie Kelty was like, well, who, how are we going to pay for it? How, why do they keep asking how are we going to pay for it? What about Coca-Cola? Well, Coke's ra raising prices. Smuckers is raising prices. Berkshire Hathaway is raising prices, passing it on to uh, consumers. How are we going to pay for it? Inflation is the constraint. Let's take a look at Google Trends. Oh, look. Inflation is starting to pick up. People are Googling the word inflation. Why? Because they're starting to figure out it's a problem. The reality is hitting home that MMT is garbage economics. It's not real economics. They can, they only use the the words inflation is the constraint. They only use those just to kind of like fend off, like don't worry about it, just keep printing. Don't worry about it, just keep printing. Yeah, inflation is the constraint. Don't worry about it, just keep printing. And then when inflation comes, are they going to call what for austerity? Cut spending, raise taxes. No. You see Mosler and Kelton running around, and the other guy, Billy Bob, whatever his name is, running around like, ooh, stop spending, stop, we're causing inflation. When unemployment is high, <laughs> so the unemployed are, are creating the inflation with all that demand because, you know, everything is just going so wonderfully. Reality. Reality is a bitch. 
All right, let's see what Buffett has to say. Signs of inflation beginning to increase. Let me answer that. Greg can get more. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very. Did he say very substantial inflation? Wait, let me back that up. I, I, I'm getting deaf in my old age. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very. Oh, yeah, he did say very. Can't go bankrupt. Take that question off the table. Then the question becomes what you just raised. What are the limits? And the limit, the binding constraint, is inflation. <laughs> okay. Let me answer that. Greg can get more. We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very. Yeah. All right. Very substantial inflation. All right. So. What have I been telling you for the past four years? Plus, plus, right? MMT is voodoo economics. I, you know, I was an MMT. -er. Uh, I set out to prove that MMT works, and I set out disproving it in the end. And uh, that's that's what pure MMT was all about. Um, I kind of gave up on that. <laughs> Because people just, you know, they're mindless. So they're like, yeah, whatever, I want free stuff. Woohoo! give me more free stuff, more free stuff. Give me more free stuff. The MMT, the golden calf, more free stuff. So it's like, okay, you'll figure it out eventually. And now they're figuring it out. The whole world is figuring it out that MMT is just voodoo economics with false promises of riches. Vote for me. I will make you rich. Long-term unemployment, shooting to the moon, and we have inflation. And uh, somebody told me the other day that, oh, Nick, you just don't understand it. You just don't understand what's happening. This is a paradigm shift, and in the next 50 years, we're going to do great. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're not doing great so far. Right. Price stability and max employment. Well, <laughs> Fed has not created price stability nor max employment. Oh, you're just an austerity hound. No, no, that, that's not going to fly either. You can take that garbage and go home with it. Because austerity was never a problem until deficits became excessive. That requires austerity. And now you can't do austerity because of the excessive deficits. So now austerity matters to you because you don't like the consequences. Right? It doesn't fit your ideology of a paradigm shift. We're all going to be rich now. We can print through inflation. Don't worry about it. Everything is fine. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, you're just putting people down. I'm putting people down because I'm telling you what reality is. Think about that. Labor force participation is at multi-decades lows. It's been falling for 20 years. 20 years. There you go. The more deficits, the less labor force participation that you end up with. We call that crowding out investment. Oh, that's just because the boomers are... Uh, they're retiring. That's why labor force participation is falling. Eh, wrong. Millennials are bigger than boomers. And they're at the ripe old age of their early 30s, 30s and prime, um, prime age labor force. Nah, you, can't, you can't fly with that shit either. So more deficits, more unemployment, less labor force participation, less economic growth, and as I said in the previous video, we've added $18 trillion of public debt for a measly now 3.5%, I'm sorry, 3.5 trillion of real GDP growth. That's inflation adjusted. Horrible. Horrible. And now you have High unemployment, 
with commodity inflation that's going to translate into um, inflation in the real economy that you and I are going to have to pay for. And that's how we're going to pay for it. By the way, this is deficits. Okay, this is deficits right here. And this is labor force participation, the red. Okay. And it's been falling and falling for two decades. And nobody really cared about austerity back here. No one cared. Why? Didn't matter. Didn't matter. You want to try to put an austerity here now? Woof. Woof. <laughs> oh, boy. There's going to be a lot of sad people if austerity is imposed here. It's a dirty word now. Didn't matter back here. Now all of a sudden it matters. It's a dirty word. We don't want to hear it. We just want more printing so we can have a paradigm shift. And we're all going to be rich. Your words are now being quantified. And you don't like it. And if you cannot reverse excessive deficits, then you don't have control of deficits. And if you don't have control of deficits, then what's the end game? Bad. That's the end game. If you cannot reverse it, if you cannot create more economy than, than dollars, then you're heading in the wrong direction, at top speed, in the dark, towards a cliff. And as I've been telling you for years, no government can print value for a currency. They can print digits, worthless digits. They can print them up all they want, but they cannot create value for those digits. And no economy is going to grow because of demand-side economics, just like it didn't grow for supply-side economics. They're both equally the same garbage. Okay, You're not just going to magically give money to the poor, and which is very s simplistic thinking, and then you're going to create all this demand, and the economy is just going to boom, and all the uh, uh, everybody's going to be hired. That's that's like that's like saying, well, we figured out a way how to make uh, the poor rich. The rich are just going to tell them how to become rich, and then the poor are going to become rich. See, easy. Oh wow, the novel, novel idea. That's how silly MMT is, was, and will continue to be silly. And here you have inflation is a constraint. Constraint. Learn MMT. Hashtag. Woohoo. Learn MMT. Yeah. Inflation is a constraint. Boy, are these people going to eat their words. They will eat their words because they're going to go to the supermarket and they're going to come out and they're going to be like, I bought less and I'm paying more. What's, the, what's wrong with this picture? It now costs... $35,850 more to build an average home. A deck from a year ago, you got to pay four times more. It was, I think, uh, 900 something. They say 1000 Now you got to pay $4,000 to build a deck that cost that used to cost uh, 1000 a year ago. So I told you so. I've been telling you for years. Didn't listen. All right. So. That's it for this video. I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Don't forget, patreon.com slash realmacro. Like, subscribe, follow. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.